It's really hard to understand how malloc works, or even why malloc works. This quick video should show you a little bit of how we want to allocate memory to store a node that might be part of a list. And so I've defined a quick structure for this node. I want the node to have a string pointer, so it's going to have a char star to a string that's going to store a pointer to some other character variable. A value that's of time kind int called val, and another node, which is the next node, which is a, a pointer to the node struct. So, using this type def, I'm now going to be able to show uh, how we're going to allocate it on the heap. So the heap is a big block of a bunch of memory and that we have access to, but to use things on the heap, we need to use good old malloc. And so I'm going to call this big block here memory land. Big things are going to happen in memory land, and if you try to do the wrong thing in memory land, you're going to land yourself in trouble. So let's imagine, uh, sort of in a smaller version, we have memory land here, and at the beginning of our program, memory land is full of junk. So whatever data happens to be there is still there. Some machines and some compilers will actually turn all of these values to zero, but let's assume that it's full of junk for now, because that actually makes it easier for you to do some of the things that you need to do. So now I want to allocate memory for a new node. And so there's some magical things in here that we do. We call, first of all, the function malloc. This is going to give us memory, memory allocate, that's what malloc stands for. It's going to give us a memory address. And we're telling here that the kind of address that we're expecting is of kind node star. So it's a pointer to some node somewhere. So by calling malloc, we also tell it, how much memory do I need? Well, I need as much memory as is in a node. How much memory is in a node? Well, I need to store a string value, and then I need to have an int called val, and then I need to have another value called next. In this example, all these things are the same size, and so I need three units of memory here. These are going to be four bytes or eight bytes, depending on how big your machine is. So here, I received a return value from malloc, and that return value is the actual memory address in the heap where I can access my own memory that's of this length. So this little red box corresponds somewhere inside the heap to memory address 22, and there's junk already in this box. This is why we need to initialize all of our data values. So I'm going to wipe these values, set them all to zeros, which at the same time is going to set those values to zero over here in memory land. So any value that I change in this little red box that's on the outside is just sort of zoomed into memory land. And so when I change it here, it changes in memory land as well, because I'm dealing with a particular address that's in memory land. So now I want to store a word into, into the heap, into this node. And the word I want to store is called Craven. It doesn't really matter what it means. If you're scared, that you might not mean what you think that it means. You can just look it up and see what it means. So Craven is a word of a certain length. The length of the word Craven is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But to store the word Craven, I need more than 6 units of memory. I also need 1 to store my slash 0. So I actually need 7 units of memory to score to store Craven here. Or, if you want to think of it this way, I want to allocate memory the size of a care times the length of Craven plus one. So that's going to allocate Craven since it's six long plus one is seven. So seven elements the size of care. So I'm going to get a block in memory that's going to be this big. And Malik told me that that is at location 29 inside of the heap. So there's some data that's already there. And whatever data is there is what also happens to be there. So now I actually want to take the string and put it into that address. So this is what it means. When I call stir copy, I'm telling stir copy, hey, take this string that's the second parameter and put it at the memory address, str. So keep working on that string until you find the null character. And that's exactly what it'll do. So first it'll wipe out all those data values, both on our little block and also in memory land. And now we're going to add them in one by one including the slash zero, which uh, stir copy will do for us. Now it's important to see that if I were to try to access this block right here, 
which is element C. This is 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So if I try to access block 36, I'm going to get something called an access violation because I don't have access to that memory. Somebody else may have access to it or the heap may just own it on its own. So you won't always get this memory a, a problem at once as soon as you access it. You'll only get it maybe when your program exits. Or um, if you try to allocate that memory later, you may get a problem that says, oh, your heap is corrupted or your stack is corrupted because you've been accessing data outside of your range. So now we've allocated all that memory. We've stored the string that we want, but I want that string to actually be part of the node. And right now the string doesn't have anything in it. So if I wanted to store that string actually in this node, I wouldn't have space. I would try to write Craven right here, C-R-A-V-E-N. And then I would start to allocate, I'd start to deal with memory values that I don't own, right? So I would be C-R-A-V-E-N, and then I would put my slash zero right here. Uh, and then I would get a heap violation. So that's a bad decision. So instead of doing that, we designed our struct so that we would hold a pointer to another memory address. And so now the next thing that I want to do is copy my string that I just put onto the heap and add it to the nodes string. So in a sense, I'm going to take the memory address, stir, where I just allocated this memory, and tell the node, hey, if you want that string, you can find it at this location. And that's exactly what we'll do. We'll erase the value that we currently have for the stir, and we'll replace it with 29, which was the address that we got from malloc. So now our completed node has the address, 29, right here. This is the address of where we can find the string. And so if we wanted to print this node out, we would dereference that address. That is, we'd go to node 29 and actually print out the string. So hopefully this helps you understand why and how we use malloc a little differently for the various node structures that you might use in a list or in a really complex container.